Well, hey, it's a new year. Uh, so let's do a new shotcast. Uh, this is the AR shotcast 2v2, uh, submitted by Bolsonator. Uh, it's, it, it's on the map Dyke. Uh, and I, I, you know, Dyke's, Dyke's a fun map, interesting map. You don't see it played too often, usually in a 2v2. Uh, you'll see a uh, map like Neunen or Nuvel or, uh, or Bergen played, but you know, it's always good to see a map, uh, a map other than the normal played. So, uh, let's see what's going on. The teams, uh, in this 2v2 are, uh, Clone and Volst on, uh, on allies probably, because Volst plays nothing but allies. And Axis is, a uh, Gary Greywolf, and, uh, two blocks are fabulous for depending on how you know his name. And just looking at the teams right away, I, w I would go ahead and, and say uh, the, this game is probably in favor of Axis. Uh, I'd say the two best players in the room probably are on Axis. Uh, Rug definitely is the best, best player in the room based on what I've seen uh, over the past few months. Uh, Gary Gary's pretty good too, although he he might be a bit rusty because uh, he's it's been a while since I've actually played, seen Gray Wolf uh, play any EIR. But let, let's see what happens here. Uh, we'll go ahead and watch from Volks since he's the Volks point of Volks point of view since uh, he's the one who uh, submitted this replay. And let's start off and see uh, what the starting columns are. So we get to see Volsk here, and it appears that Volsk missed the memo. It is no longer the year 2009. Triple M8 starts are not a thing anymore. Uh, there are a few reasons for this. Uh, under the LV changes uh, that uh, Tank 130 had uh, uh, put into the game, uh, M8s will no longer kill tanks and things like that. So triple M8s will no longer be like a P4 or a stuff or something like that. They'll still kill like half tracks and uh, and jeeps and maybe put some damage in other LVs. But if you run into a tank, your your triple M8 start now is uh, dead on arrival. Uh, on top of that, uh, M8s don't currently cap uh, because the armor doctrine currently is not coded for that. It will come in in the future, but until then, uh, this is a really interesting start. It's especially from someone like Volskinator, who generally hates these kind of starts. So let's see what he's brought on, and let's see what his opponent's brought on. Uh, his opponent is Gary. He started with a stew, uh, two stormtroopers, so he's kind of like, okay, he's got good shits. I don't actually know, will M8s penetrate good shits? They, for rear armor, for sure they will. I don't know about frontal armor. They might still, actually. I'm not sure what armor we, the good shits has. Uh, the storms though, and the stew, the stew is going to do absolutely nothing to M8s. Uh, I mean, if it, even if it hits it, I don't think it does a lot of damage. And I really doubt a project, uh, a not, not a, a hit, non-hit roll uh, weapon uh, will uh, actually hit an M8 very often. Uh, so actually, you know what? Grey Wolf might have some trouble with this because I don't know if he's got enough AT to do with three M8s. I mean, these storms might have house, and they might, to be honest, because they got they got sprint on field right now. Oh, cool little tip, if your storms are sprinting and you activate cloak, uh, they will move in cloak at normal speed, so just a little tip for you guys. So here comes the first engagement. This shit is kind of pointing the wrong way, so let's see if they have house in these storms or not. So yeah, the M8s do not frontally penetrate a Gashit's wagon. Two fouls come in. Uh, thing to note, uh, he probably should have put those fouls onto one M8 to try and get the, kill, uh, the uh, early focus fire to kill something. Uh, the Stu wonderfully uh, kills his own stormtrooper, so that's always good to see, team killing. And these inmates continue to bounce miserably off the front of this Geschütz wagon. Although the Geschütz wagon is not getting too many hits in right now, he's gotten two hits on this guy plus a Faust. Uh, this inmate might be dead though, getting blocked by the Stu intentionally or unintentionally, so one of these inmates does need to come around and finally get your armor hit on this Geschütz to kill it before this inmate goes down. And the stew does some damage, surprisingly, to this uh, M8. But the Gashitz is down, so Gary's in a bit of trouble here, because this stew is not going to kill any M8s, and this storm's just revealed itself uh, to get the Faust off, so it's going to die. Target mark on the uh, M8, I'm not sure if that's going to be worthwhile, because it's going to be moving out of the way. Uh, okay, I take back everything. I know nothing about EIR. It turns out stews are actually fantastic counters to M8s, as we just saw right there. <laughs> but in all seriousness, no, this Storm Squad's gonna die now that it's gonna reveal and this dude probably will die in short order afterwards as these M8 circles to have to get your armor gets on it. So Gary's been basically wiped off. Let's see if he's got a 2 scar response coming in. He's got Vanilla Grenadiers. Um, I'm really confused by this choice. Uh, I've never in my life thought that the idea that when you see M8s on field, the best thing you could possibly do is bring on Vanilla Grenadiers to deal with them. I, I, I know Gary's rusty, uh, but this this is a whole new level of rust. This is this is this is something else. But let's see let's see what his plan is. Let's see what he does here. Uh, they, they they are sprinting as well, it looks like they're sprinting grenadiers, so he's he's really putting in the manpower to get these uh, units properly uh, level I mean not leveled up but uh kitted out. Uh, the stew's just sitting here waiting for these MX to circle straight it. 
which I'm surprised they didn't do while the stew was back here. They really had could have had the work of the stew, but I guess you know, I guess I guess the stew killing the M8 put the fear of God into Volskin here. So he's like, you know, I don't want to fuck with the stew, right? But no, here they go. Here comes the engagement, and uh, he although he it is by a house getting the rear armor hits probably tough because as you know, M8 won't uh, bluntly penetrate the stug armor. Uh, correction, uh, and it's will friendly penetrate stuck armor. Uh, again, once again, I show my knowledge of this game. <laughs> but now these inmates have found these grenadiers, so these are going to die in short order, and uh, these grenadiers, I guess they're capping, but I, if you've watched the R plus uh, videos I've made, you'll note that I've said that capping in the early game in R plus really doesn't matter. The most important thing you can do is win your engagement and get good field position, because they've got almost full map control to zero map control with allies, because they don't they don't cap anything, obviously, with inmates. So. For all that map control, uh, the Axis have gotten one pop, one measly pop for losing their entire starting call in, and that's, it's really hard to say that that's what you want, right? In four minutes, he's lost a stew, like a shit's wagon, two fully kitted out stormtroopers, and, uh, for one pop, you know, and, and a few vanilla grenadier squads. Uh, these hit a mine, so these inmates found them pretty fast, seeing the mine get destroyed, but the second pair's on, so let's see what they're being done. Uh, we got Rug on now with, oh, he's playing Luftwaffe. He's got a, a, a bunch of Falsham Niggers, uh, look to be vanilla, and a light AT half track, which is a great choice against Volskinator, because there's nothing in this game that makes Volskinator rage quit more than a light AT half track with Focus Fire. So, you know what, I think, I think Rug's got the meta on right now. He's got this, uh, Minesweeper coming in as well, which is a good call, because M8's, we're gonna see some mines. And you'll notice here he has 32 pops, so he appears to have the camp group south, uh, uh, doctrine unlocked, which gives him, uh, 6 6 or pop, which is really, really nice, especially in R plus if you're going first. He's not going first this time, but generally speaking, it's really nice, because basically you can get an entire extra squad in field with that extra 6 pop. And Clone Troopers is on as well, let's see what he's bringing on. He's got a M20, so he's got his map hacks already, so he's airborne as well. T17, and two, uh, two close rifle airborne, which, which is, Pretty decent AT. He's a bit light in AI. So I'm thinking they're, I think the Allied team sensibly is thinking, you know, we start with triple M8s, uh, the Axe is going to start bringing on some tanks, so we better get some AT. That being said, Gary brought on some uh, vanilla grenadiers, so it turns out Gary is not rusty, he's actually a fucking genius, because, you know, the Allies sensibly thought the Axe would bring on tanks to hunt these M8s. Gary said, no, forget your meta, guys, I'm bringing on vanilla grenadiers. So he's obviously masterminded this game. He's countered the Allies already perfectly with these vanilla grenadiers. I'm sorry, Gary, I should not have questioned you. So let's see where this game goes as these vanilla grenadiers will now shortly die to these M8s. Um, you know, for all that's been said, uh, Gary got his, Gary got wiped off the field by Wolf's Uh But that being said, Allies have not taken too much advantage of that in that they haven't really established a position. In, in the central field, right? They haven't established good central field control despite being that R plus. So they're ahead on attrition for sure, like, but uh, in, in actual field control, they might be a bit behind. Uh, Gary is not calling, in, I think Gary is zero pop right now, so I think he might be in a bit of a state of shock having lost to Volskinator in a only one. Which, you know, you, no one likes to lose to Volsk, right? It's just it's just not something anyone enjoys ever. It's like a universal rule. Losing to Volsk is not fun. Uh, but, uh, let's see what the Axis do here. Like, see all this. Like, despite winning all those early engagements, most of winning those early engagements, uh, it looks like Axis are gonna go ahead and still take control of this town here. Which is pretty surprising considering how much Gary lost. And Gary has called on a Tiger and, uh, and two MP44 Stormtroopers. I'll assume these have Sprint, Bundle Nades, Cloak, and all that jazz. So, uh, they'll be for killing AT guns, I think. Which is fool on you, because there's no AT guns. There's there are uh recoverless rifles on field, which of course uh feast on tigers, assuming caveat there's smoke on field. Uh and they will know this tiger's on because they've got the map hack M20 on here. But let's see how uh Axis deal with the situation. These Falschmakers are advancing slowly ahead, so it looks like uh the Axis are gonna go 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 for a full aggressive strat here with the uh, with nothing but spreading infantry from Gary and uh, looks like just vanilla Volshimager spam from Rug. So I think they might be going for a capping strat here anyway, so maybe they don't really care how much they lose, they're just trying to get map control. Which is not a bad plan, I mean, generally speaking, allied players don't expect that to happen from an Axis player, so... It does tend to catch allies off surprise, right? But the thing is, uh, especially with Gary here running Stormtroopers, he's gonna run out of infantry really fast, so the capping strat needs to be done pretty fast and pretty early, because if it does turn into game of attrition, uh, because of those Stormtroopers, uh, it's not gonna go well for Axis. But right now, they've got almost 60% field control, so it's it's working out so far. This T-17 happens in some of these, uh, Falschmakers. 
although uh, the M20 goes down, so losing that M20 actually is a bit of a big deal, because it does cost a lot of fuel and manpower to get it. The slight AD half-track could also cause some real troubles for these uh, M8s and T17s, so let's see what's going on. These Falsh Megas dealing with some engineers down here quite quickly, and these uh, MP44 Storms coming in, probably going to try and kill these airborne. A bit of target marked here, but again, target marked and move tar moving target is generally not what you want to use it on, uh, because by the time those mortars come down, they'll be far away. Uh, mark target, the more mark and fire it's technically called for Blitzkrieg, it's best to be used on like an AT gun or support weapon because it basically forces the player to decide do they want to move their AT gun or risk the RNG of a mortar landing and wiping the AT gun out, right? So it's really good for a tank to use on something like that. Now uh, these, uh, the light AD have goes down, but the uh, two M8s die in response, so it's probably a fair trade for them. These storms sprinting ahead, trying to kill these airborne, so it looks like Axis will get a pretty good uh, win right here. Uh, as they're probably going to wipe out these uh, airborne and this T-17 as well. Um, or no, they seem to be backing off, so the airborne and T-17 will survive. I guess they're really afraid of this T-17, although I'm pretty sure the Tiger could have handled it pretty easily. And uh, the second wave of engagement coming on is both moves on uh, an MG, a uh, bar rifle squad, and a marine squad. And this Chaffee is attempting... Uh, once again, we have a target mark on a moving target, so I really doubt this target mark is going to do anything uh, useful. Uh, yeah, as you see, these mortars almost friendly fire <laughs> onto uh, these stormtroopers. We do have a stun from the T-17 here, but unfortunately there's nothing here to really take advantage of that stun. Because uh, the stun makes the tiger temporarily immobile, uh, or, or stun, of course, uh, but uh, you still need something to actually do the killing. The T-17 obviously is not going to do that. Uh, so allies uh, are in actually a bit of a precarious field position here, because they have to go through a lot of red cover and open ground to get the Axis line here to advance, so um, Axis really have fantastic field control despite lo losing that early game. This T-17 is going to die pretty quickly, and these uh, storms are revealed here, and they're probably going to get suppressed by this MG here. This T-17 uh, appears to not be willing to die as these storms get suppressed uh, up upper section here. And this uh, M8 quad as well, oh, so assault nades, forcing an instant retreat from this vet to the rifle squad, which is a really good result. And these flush makers print the hurting these marines at long range, which they will excel at with their rifles and enemy cover. Uh, this Tiger seems to be shooting enough at AP rounds at Airborne, which of course is not a good idea. I mean, Airborne are hard enough for the hit, it's, it doesn't help the cause if you're using AP rounds in infantry. And we have a bit of a low here. Um, so it's uh, it, it's looking bad for allies despite the, gr the great attrition start by uh, Vols. Uh, they, they've got pretty poor field position for this. These marines are probably going to go down pretty shortly with the combination of these false makers and these uh, stormtroopers. Although they, the stormtroopers seem to not to want to have any deal with this MG here. Which is surprising since they have cloaked, they probably just cloak up or send a tiger here and kill it off. All of these storms here find the middle, find themselves in the middle of these uh, airborne blob, and this airborne blob probably is going to go down, although they might get the martyr in return. We have uh, flashing grenades coming down, killing quite a few airborne, along with one stormtrooper. Uh, the airborne are off field now, Chaffee coming on, uh, T-17 goes down. Uh, this MG is probably going to suppress this blob here, but this Chaffee now has no support. Uh, allies seem to be sending all their vehicles into the Axis lines piecemeal. And I really wonder if that's going to be a good plan in the long run. Uh, allies are in pretty dry straits here. They've lost a lot already, to be honest. Uh, I think everything that Gary lost early in the game has been made up for at this point. I think it's an even playing field now, attrition-wise. And once again, uh, another failed allied offensive as they just get pushed off the field here. It, it, this might be a matter of Rug's pop advantage. No, it's not even. Rug is barely using this population advantage that he's gained here, so it's... It's not even that allies are simply losing because of, you know, doctrine picks here. They're just they're just getting killed or possibly outplayed. They're just putting bad offensives. They're rushing in peace and then they're losing all their units. So it's going to be interesting to see if the allies can or pull this back. And if they do, how they manage to do that. Uh, this tiger could easily roll up and just kill off this, uh, this uh, GMC here. Uh, somehow this MG here has not died yet despite having plenty of tools on field to deal with it. And they made mine, uh, killing a few false meters here. <laughs> and uh, we have some units coming down. Oh, we have some backline airborne from uh, clone troopers here. That's interesting. Putting down, I assume, AT mines um, on a road, which is usually a good idea. I'm not sure if that's the best idea, though. I don't know if vehicles come down these roads too often. Here we have a uh, stew coming on field. Uh, and uh, yes, as it would turn out, uh, the AI and code decides that uh, the best way to get to a target, or get to where you want to go, isn't a straight line, which as you would assume these roads are not a straight line. Uh, but uh, let's see what's, anyways, back to action here. 
this GMC is taking some shots from these uh, falls, and we did see this MG finally go down, and oh, hallelujah, we're seeing HE shells come out from this Tiger right now. Uh, putting the real hurt in these airborne rifles, although we become an ATG out here now, so that's going to be good to see. Uh, if they can get some hurt in this Tiger, which uh, he's at, he's lost a reasonable amount of health. I'm surprised there's no repair squad in the field yet from Gary uh, to repair it. Has he bought anything out? No, he's still, he's bought, oh yeah, he bought the stew, uh, but he's still got pop, I think, for another, uh, for a repair squad. Anyways, this idea to have to go down to this uh, AT gun. So see, now we see a good use of target mark here. It's it's forcing this ATG to decide, do you want to sit here and risk getting killed or move? And in this case, it moves. But by moving, the stew is getting a couple of free shots in this ATG. Failing to do anything with it, though, but you can see the proof of concept right there of what the ability is supposed to do. These storms come again and killing uh, uh, this airborne squad uh, quite quickly. This Jim C, I think, is scaring off these falls surprisingly, and these uh, assault grand uh, rifles, uh, I mean engineers, will kill them off pretty fast, uh, fast because of the uh, low health. Uh, these storms coming in, for some reason not talking about this ATG, but are this mortar. I guess they're more afraid of the smoke than they are of the ATG, although if they got rid of this ATG, this Tiger would be really free to range just wipe everything out once again. Although the GMC gets in a nice hit here, along with the mortar. Get two grenades in though, before they go to uh, wipe out the mortar, although it can probably be recruited at this point. Actually no, uh, the gun's gone, so that's a uh, good job, so I'm to Uh The stew, not too many kills yet. And uh, once again, allies, uh... Once again, we have we see offensive that's kind of whittled out in the field, and this time there was from the accents of the allies hitting another M8 mine. This uh, Stu now mobilized, they're probably going to die pretty soon. And Axis are once again trying to re-establish their control, uh, re-establish their field presence. Now uh, this Hodgkiss has a uh, damaged engine, so maybe those back yeah those backline mines did do some work. This Hodgkiss uh, did take a damaged engine. Not that it matters too much since the Hodgkiss is not going to be spending a lot of time in the front lines anyways. Uh, I like to have a bit of a counter cap going, so they are on positive pop uh, for now. And uh, looks like Alice is stabilizing, it looks like they're going to get halfway field control. So uh, so now we have a question of the attrition matching have evened out overall after seeing the Alice uh, fail to push twice. So the early game by Gary is probably cancelled out, but this field control issue, this game is probably going to be decided to field control for a bit now. There's some rifle nades out from uh, Falschermakers. You don't normally see that. Normally you see the G43s on the specialized button, but we see some Falschermakers with uh, rifle grenades. Not doing a whole lot, as it turns out. <laughs> um, rifle grenades are great against the blob as allies, since uh, no allies, but since no allies really have like roll of arms in the back, you're not going to see too much extra damage from these rifle nades that things like, say, KCH receive. Uh, and I don't think either of these players are going to be too inclined to blob uh, in this game with a tiger around and now these rifle nades as well, so. Uh, and also, it appears they decide that they did they kill? No, the uh, <laughs> the tiger killed the GMC. I thought perhaps the rifleman did, but the rifleman are shooting at this uh, tank rather than the infantry. So that would be a target priority error that we definitely need to look at. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over to Axis point of view. Let's look at Rug. Uh, Rug is ten pop short of his max pop. So here's the thing about Camp Group South. Right? It gives you six extra, extra pop to use on field. It doesn't give you any stat bonuses. It doesn't give you more equipment. It doesn't give you more gear. It doesn't do any kind of statistical buff for units whatsoever. It just gives you some extra pop to have an extra squad in field. And let's be f and if you're not using that extra pop, you may as well not have even bothered picking that doctrine. And you see Rug here playing ten pop down. So six. So th that six pop bonus is basically doing nothing for him. Uh, because he's not using it simply. We see an M10 coming on, so it looks like they're going to make a push for this Tiger here. Let's see if they can do it correctly. Once again, we see Target Mark coming on to a moving vehicle. I'm really wondering about Gary's decision making on using these Target Marks. Because they may very well hit onto these falls. And yet, yeah, they do. They well, <laughs> kills three Falsion Makers right there. Uh, so good job, Gary. And uh, we see, again, this, t but this, t this M10 is almost dead already, so it looks like there's another piecemeal engagement from the Allies, and they're just throwing more units away. All of these uh, falls are running through the tracks of this, uh, <laughs> this uh, M10, so uh, that's one of the Allies. But yeah, the Allies, they, they can't seem to string together a proper offensive. Uh, if they can kill these repair squads, though, that'd be well worth it. The Sherman should be focusing on killing these repairs and not this Tiger, because there's no hope in hell he's going to do that. But if they can get rid of these repairs, the Tiger's basically down to one life. Oh, cat joke. Um, but it's it's it seems to not be worried about that. And these Hotchkiss are coming down. Probably on this ATG, all this moving now, so it's not going to be too much of an issue. These airborne here, though, seem to be killing this uh, Falsham Eager unit. This AT gun is going to be set here. It's going to die pretty fast, though. And this Tiger is turning slowly into a hero. It's two tank kills, six light vehicle kills, and four infantry kills. Although, let's be fair, 
three quarters of those infantry kills were friendly fire, but kills are kills, XP is, is XP, right? These, uh, these rifle nade falls continue to disappoint utterly, and um, so I'm assuming we're never going to see those again from uh, Rug. Although we do see another backline unit here. We've got some backline engineers. I'm not sure if they're trying to cap or, or, or what. Maybe they have mines as well, placing a backline mine perhaps. We have a side cap attempt here as well, and it should happen soon. Yeah, there it goes. So we, the Allies are slowly, despite now falling slightly behind in the attrition game, they are clawing back into field position here. So that's that's good to see from them. But they're going to really need to start killing things again, get some proper offensives going before the, in order to have any uh, chance of winning this game. Ooh, these engineers have found these repair squads. If this repair squad goes down, that could be actually be a really big win for allies. And it's down to one man. And these these grands, these assault grands, should be able to do it because if at close range they're monstrous, right? And and there you go, the repair squad is gone. So that's a big deal. I I, I don't know if uh, Gary's got extra repair squads. I mean, normal. I think normal uh, reasoning is to s put have two, you know, split, you know, two to three um, repairs on, you know, three to four squads. But I, I know there are some people who like to put all six repairs onto a single squad, uh, just to save on manpower and population costs. So let's, I, I, if Gary was is, is in that matter side that believes that you should put all your repairs onto one unit, uh, he might be in a lot of trouble here. And this Hodgkiss as well is going to go down probably to the Zen 10 and Shafi combo. And they, at a half health, this Tigers are actually in a lot of trouble here, because there's no supporting AT right now on field. So Chaffee and M10 could ease. Oh yeah, damn tune. This tag is gonna go down. So that's so much for the hero tiger. He, I mean, he did a lot of work, but this, this, this is this is pretty painful losing it in that situation. And uh, this Chaffee here is chasing storms. I'd rather have the M10 come over and chase these storms because they can crush. Chaffee's not gonna do a whole lot. Uh, some false meters landing right on top of this M10, so it's probably gonna take some pals to the face. Uh, but the allies can now really push on fuel because Gary's major fuel presence is really tied up by this Chaffee and the Tiger going down. Uh, this M10 up to 6 kills, so yeah, as I was saying, it turns out M10s are great anti-infantry tools, not for killing tanks uh, as it crushes uh, Fall Shemigas left, right, center. Um, although it seems to have lost the pathing. So that that's, and that Chaffee, I think, is still alive with a, uh, <laughs> with a uh, Tiger kill, perhaps, I think. So this is this is suddenly turning quite nicely for the allies as as they've basically pushed Axis off midfield and they've go, made them lose the tiger which is pretty good. Uh, we have a lot of AT coming on field now though. We got the Marder coming in, the Gashuts coming in, so that's probably going to be enough to deal with the M10. And we have I think Gary might be slightly tilted, guys, because uh, I'm not gonna lie, Gashuts and two pack 38s for an M10 and a Chaffee is a lot of AT. I'm gonna say that right now. <laughs> That's a lot of AT. I think Gary might be slightly mad, bro. Gary, why you have to be mad? Because <laughs> uh, like Gashuts and, and, and two pack 38s might be a slight overreaction. That being said, it looks like these uh, this Martyr and these Gashuts are gonna get surface strafed right here. And uh, turns out I was wrong. Turns out uh, they did actually need that much AT as this this Gashuts now goes down. This Martyr might go down in short order uh, if these packs don't set up soon. Okay, these packs are in range, so they should sh shoot this M10. No, it's around the uh, hedge. Oh, never mind. I really thought this uh, M10 was around the hedge, but I guess not. And will this Chaffee get the kill? Maybe. One more shot. Oh, destroyed engine. And... Man gun destroyed. So unfortunate hero Chaffee. He did get two tank kills, but uh, which is nice. Now we have an issue here for the Axis. Uh, they've only got two Falsh Omega squads supporting two Pack 38s because these storms are diddling about over here. They think he'd move one squad into the sector up here to try and cap, but not at the moment. Uh, but allies have great field position. Oh, and we have the triage on field. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Allied U.S. Infantry Company has an ability that lets you, if you have, if you have a squad down at non-optimal uh, squad number numbers, you can use manpower to reinforce the squads in game. So we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, it looks like the attrition victory is going to be a lot harder now for uh, Axis as uh, that infantry triage is on field. So priority number one for Axis right now, if they see that triage, they need to take it down uh, because if that triage goes down, uh, yeah, if that triage goes down, then Volsky's in trouble. And suppression fire quickly suppresses the volts, uh, volts and uh, not volts, storms. And uh, he quickly out out micros Gary's uh, nade throw there, and uh, he's probably going to suppress these squads as well. And there goes the suppression, and they're going to get forced off field. So man, this entire game, Volsk has been having his way with Gary. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's kind of pornographic to be honest. How how hard he's uh, done him in. Uh, but let's see if uh, Axis can hold here. They might be able to with a little bit of support coming in. 
I'm not sure why these uh, Grenadiers would leave green cover right here uh, for no cover basically. Uh, green cover is almost twice as good as uh, yellow cover and infinitely better than no cover. So even if he's moving back here to get this yellow cover, uh, I'm not sure if it's worth it to leave, uh, leave the green cover because they're going to die either way, let's be fair here. Well, we have some backline Falchmakers dropped here, probably going to kill this MG and ATG. Yeah, they will, but uh, that being said, those two falls in the backline aren't going to achieve much. They'll kill, they'll kill the ATG maybe. But they've lost central, they're, they're losing more and more central field control, although we do have a uh, LATHD, which I, what I, what I assume focus fire here. But the, everything here is just going to move back and finish off these falls, and they'll, they'll still not have achieved much in the front line here, as these Grenadiers took quite a bit of damage. They didn't die though, which is, okay, they're going to die now as these uh, uh, these LMG Marines and these Bars rifles come in. This focus fire should make uh, them, uh, these units fuck off though, because uh, Volsk hates losing vet, and this focus fire is great for killing vet. Uh, but as I was saying earlier, these falls have dropped here, and now they're just going to get focused down as they leave this line here. And these unsupport falls are going to get killed off by everything here. So these backline, uh, these backline incursions work, but only if your teammate is there to support you. And Gary, most definitely, with two packs, is not going to be there to support these falls. So they're quickly going to go down to this combined firepower with the BAR, the LMG, and these, uh, uh, these carbines. And assault grants, all of these are low down. Nate comes in, kind of decides, kind of greedy, don't know whether they hit the rifles or the LMG marines, and they decide to get both, uh, but gets nothing. Uh, there is a flash maker sniper on field, though, so that's going to be helpful in this attrition game. Um, even with the uh, reinforce from this uh, triage, uh, the sniper attrition will be pretty difficult to handle. 